Even though I will be talking about some Arturio new products, I want to talk about the idea behind how to use a rotary speaker or a Leslie speaker. In their new FX Collection 4, they released a couple of new effects and they had been doing so. If you if you still haven't heard of Arturia, they're a company that started in 1999 and they have been doing a lot of virtual instruments for a while. I don't know, like maybe seven years ago, they started making effects, like the three compressors that you need, the three delays that you need and effects that you will actually use. So with that in mind, I want to start making a couple of videos on what's the idea of having maybe just a couple of effects that you will constantly use in different ways because my way of understanding audio is quite modular. So I just make my own chains and I get my own results because that's my sound signature. And straight from Exo City, my name is Juanchis and let's learn about rotary speakers using Arturia's new Leslie. So I have this session where I have a couple of drums. Let's listen to this. Okay, so as soon as you open up the plugin, you end up with something like this. Remember that most Arturia plugins have a small feature right up here that's called Advanced, and that usually opens a little bit more of control. Don't forget that you might have a couple of extra controls down here, but the architecture or the user interface is really simple. They have a saturation stage, they have the rotary effect, and they have the speed of the rotary effect. For this, I need to speak about how does the Leslie rotary speaker system works. So you would usually find this with a Hammond and use this for amplification of the Hammond. So this goes into this cabinet right here. And inside of it, you have a crossover that separates the high frequencies from the low frequencies. And the high frequencies have one speaker, but it has two horns that are constantly rotating at a certain speed. And the low end also has a sort of cylinder that's also ro rotating around. Some guitar cabinets also use this system. If you haven't looked deep into the Reverb YouTube channel, like you have to, there's so much information in there. And in this video of Eric Tesmer exploring vintage Leslie guitar tones, he shows how inside of the guitar cabinet, they have this rotary cylinder that's constantly giving this Leslie effect for the guitar amp. And that's the basic mechanic of it. The basic, And that's the basic mechanics of it. You could mic up top with one microphone. You could mic two sides so you would get a stereo image and you would get this lowering of the level every time the horn goes away from the microphone and it comes back, it comes up again. And in the bottom end, you might want to use maybe just one mic. I'm not sure if two mics here is ideal, but this gives a lot of options for micing something like this. So the idea module is that you have one signal split into two bands high and low frequencies and you can capture it on one side or both sides and the low end in one side. One fun thing is that if you mic it and record the three channels at the same time you don't necessarily need the three channels all of the time so maybe you want some sections to be stereo and some sections to be mono. So I have this and that translates into this user interface. If I open up that bands I can see more of these effects. Let's turn on the effect and let's listen again to these keyboards. That's with the stereo image fully mono and I'm going to start opening it up until the super stereo. In the lower part of the plugin, you can see two small balls fiddling around. So when you just start the plugin, it comes up just like this and you don't have a stereo image. The sound is just getting out of band from left to right with a lowering of the volume whenever it hits the center because that's the horns being captured, right? So if I change the speed relationship of the high speaker versus the low speaker, that's going to actually make it stereo. because now I have the same sound being spread through a crossover across the horizontal width of my of my speakers. So you don't necessarily have to make it so aggressive. Maybe you just want to make it a little bit off. 
And also you might want to play around with these two knobs where you modify more or less the trajectory. That's how they describe it. If you see the little yellow one, that's a treble, it's going higher and lower now. It's not only going one single direction, see? So that has to do with amplitude. That way you can mess around with level a lot more and maybe you don't want it to be as hard or I don't know, like just have fun with it. And you could also change the shape of the trajectory. I think that's the most entertaining parameter. More or less that combination, I like it a little bit more. Maybe a little less movement. You can always sing it to your dot. That's nothing unusual. And you can hide pass the input. That's beautiful because we always need some filtering within our plugins. And you can make it slower or faster. Maybe I would like to have like a knob that actually makes it like just go faster or slower. But I get why you only have like a switch for this. I just think that going fast, it's always way too fast for most uses. Unless you're trying to go into some unknown territory, the fast one, I'm not really using it as much. That's a plugin, like that's all you can do with it. I think it does a great job, but let's take this idea a little bit further and let's build our own chain and let's try to compare what's actually going on within the plugin. So what we need, just a small review, just as, as a small review of what's going on. We need some sort of crossover, we need some sort of panning, and we need some sort of level control, right? So as usual, and as I have stated on other videos previously, you might want some FX chains already ready to go. So before this plugin, I was actually doing this effect by hand because I built a chain with a three band splitter stuck from Reaper with a volume and pan control with a pitch effect. Remember that for you to be able to build these chains, you have to really get into the plugin pin connector section. So you get one band really only modified by some plugins and the mid frequencies or lower frequencies only affected by other effects. And then you group them back together with the three band joiner. I'll probably leave this chain up in the description so you can download it for free. Let me show you how this sounds. I honestly really like the way this chain does it. I really like the fact that I added some chorus-like effects. It may be a little bit too much, so I have a non-chorus-like version of it, but they do combine well together. I mean, like, they are more or less the same idea. I could use the rotary speaker and then just add the chorus at the end. And as usual, the effects don't sound the same if you change the order of it, so... So maybe just try your favorite chorus effect. Arturia has a couple that are really, really good. Let's try the Dimension D. I think that sounds really interesting. And let's try the Juno one. As you can see, the main idea of what's going on with the Rotary speaker is not something so far away from our knowledge that we cannot understand it. I'm always going to try and push you to build your own chains to get your own personal effects that are interesting. Even though I have an Arturia sponsorship as an artist, I'm not getting paid to make this video. Like, I really like their products and I think they are great for explaining some basic needs of what we need to work with audio and stay creative. If you can't afford right now this effects collection, 
you might want to build it from scratch using stack plugins and try to get as close as possible. And once you try it and you realize that it's something that's actually pushing you further into a better direction, then you might want to buy it. I will never suggest that you buy things just because, but you should buy them when they are really making your work a lot easier. And by now Arturia has like 30 effects in the FX collection, if I'm not mistaken. They start with these preamp plugins, the Trident, the Telefunken and the NIP73. And they started also with the compressors, with the BCA, the tube and the pet, and they started adding more and more things like the delays and the filters and the chorus and the distortions that sound like so good go check it out if you like one of their plugins like you might want to consider that's going to be like ten dollars per plugin if you buy the full bundle uh, if you want to check it on plugin boutique you might want to use the, the affiliate link in, in the description and that kicks back a little bit into the channel so i can keep on making these videos and remember that combination and creative combination is key so i'm going to add a uh, delay before the rotary speaker and I'm going to add it not ping pong style inserted as if I was going through a pedal into the rotary speaker as you can listen this adds a certain extra movement to the depth of the sound so like just have fun with it maybe you want to delay after this And why not just enjoy some automation with it? So you can listen to how the sign starts widening up with the automation of this knob. And that will probably help me make my sections a little bit wider and a little bit narrower. So I get more changes going through my music that aren't as noticeable but they are really impactful for this to really show up i'm going to unmute the drums because once you have something really clear at the center you can really notice what the movement is adding to the instrument I almost forgot about this as I was about to start recording the next video. So I do want to show you that this key was made with the Sorge plugin and it also includes a rotary effect. As you can see right here in the effect section, if you want for me to make a couple of videos on the Sorge, I'd be happy to do them. Be sure to let me know in the comments. So I can just double click the effect and it turns on and up. And as I told you before, what we're looking for are some of these parameters that I'm expecting to have in a rotary speaker so i have a horn rate remember those are the, the horns and the rotor rate it's the lower end of it you have that you have an amp to it and i have different ways of saturating that amp essentially what leslie speakers are they're playing with the doppler effect that's all they're playing with and the tremolo is remember that's the that's the level fluctuation that we will have and how wide do we want it so let's listen also to the one that Surge has included And if that wasn't enough, remember that recently we got access to modulating the effects as well. So maybe you want to modulate uh, the horn rate like this.
So yeah, I was forgetting about that. Let's go back to the video and I'm going to start recording the next video. So that's a rotary effect by Arturia. I think it's a great idea. It's something that definitely doesn't sound like the chain I made. So it gives me another Leslie sound that I could use on something. I could place this thing before uh, an amp speaker that I'm using as an effects within my DAW. So have fun with it. Check it out. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to like, comment, subscribe and all of those things that people on YouTube say and straight from Mexico City. My name is Juanchis. Thanks for listening.